What is going on guys? Joy Friends are here with Flex Training Systems. Wow, I feel like I've been saying that for like six years. It's because I have. <laughs> and today we're gonna talk about load caps. What am I talking about? So basically, you know, it, it, it'd be like saying for this style of training where you're gonna have singles frequently in your training, every week, multiple times a week, twice a month, whatever. I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons of putting a, a definitive, you know, number in there um, and who this might benefit and who this works against. And then I'll share my preference at the end, right? Um, so pretty much, uh, example, you have a lifter, they take a bunch of singles, they're having trouble not overshooting because they just want to go heavy for the gram or whatever, you know, there's just for whatever reason, right? Maybe it's a habit. Maybe they're just really bad at judging. Maybe they're taking too big a jumps from their warmups to their singles, right? Maybe they don't truly understand RPE and they're not asking the right questions. They do really bad when they are um, supposed to be able to choose loads for themselves, right? Or what I like to do is like teach the lifter a system for doing that. And then over time, they get really good at it. And then it becomes automatic. And you know, you can really be on autopilot. But basically, you know, get a newer lifter, they're not really sure. Right, you've been working with them for a while, or you know, they're like RPE eight single on a good day, right? The keyword on a good day. So you give them numbers that they're not allowed to go over. Um, for some people, this can be a good thing because mentally you can prepare yourself for like, okay, I know I'm not going heavier than this today, so I don't really need to get hyped up or psyched up about it. Um, uh, for other people, um, maybe you come into the gym and you're feeling really, really good. And I will give you a specific example in a minute, but let's say you feel really, really good and you work up to your load cap, right? The, the, the load, the top of the load for the day. And you just stop there. Not allowed to go heavier than that. Right. Um, and then maybe the rest of your prep, you're building your fatigue and you're going into the meet now with no confidence because you are not really sure what you're capable of had, you know, had you not had that cap in place, um, you might've been able to hit something, you know, maybe eight weeks out from your meet, um, six weeks out from your meet, whatever, to give you a lot of confidence going into the meet saying, damn, I had already hit this. I know I could do this. You know, I'm gonna hit this. No problem. I know for me personally, it really helps a lot knowing that you could do the weight when you've already done it before and your conditions on meet day are better, like better sleep, better recovery, a taper, and you already hit it in the gym. I mean, it's like you, you have so much, you know, it's that guaranteed, right? It's like, unless you really, really screw up, you're going to hit it. Um, but basically you would give somebody load caps if they just really suck at like controlling themselves or they just get too hyped up or too caught up in the moment or they're new on social media and they want to, they feel like they need to try to get a following or something. So they want to post their singles constantly, whatever. Right. And they're always going heavy, going heavy, going heavy. You know, they have bad habits in their technique and they're not allowed, you know, they're not allowing themselves the chance to really fix it, whatever. Right. So you can give them load caps to sort of calm them down. And my argument against them, right. I'm not saying it's always a bad thing, but I'm saying for, I would say for lifts, that are more mature that aren't really going to move that much because you've been lifting already for 10 years and you're kind of like, you know, we pretty much know that you're going to train your ass off for 12 to 16 weeks and you're only hoping to get a 2.5 to 5 kg PR. If that, assuming everything's perfect, then you can, you know, kind of, you pretty much know where your strength is going to be. Um, it does kind of go a little bit against the way that I like to use RPE. You know what I mean? But it's just like I'm trying to do this whole video is like opposite devil's advocate thinking different than what I normally do. Right. To sort of challenge that and provide some sort of insight as to what the other side might do. Right. The reason why I, I like RPE and I don't like using the load caps is because you rob yourself of opportunities 
Um, well, well, let me explain that. You rob yourself of opportunities when you simply say, you're not allowed to go above this weight. That's as high as you're supposed to go. Maybe it goes up over weeks or whatever. But if you come into the gym and for whatever reason you feel amazing, you're not allowed to hit this. Now you can simply say, and I kind of do this with RPE already. If I give someone an RPE eight single, right? They might hit me up and say, hey, Joey, I just hit this RPE eight single and it felt like an RPE seven. I feel like I can hit a PR today. Is okay if I push it a little bit, whatever this and that. In that case, uh, oftentimes I'll say, yeah, absolutely, let's do it because I mean, I know where they're at in relation to their meat and th the mental benefit from being able to hit that big single clean, if, if what they're saying is true and, a, and their normal RPE 8 on a good day is feeling like an RPE 7, they don't need to max out. They can take an 8, 8.5, hit a PR or, or close to their PR, or move something in a way they've never moved it before and then have the confidence to move forward from you know that day knowing no matter how fatigued they get the next week or the week after, no matter what they got going on, they know that they're capable of hitting something bigger on the platform once we pull all that fatigue down, whatever, this and that, right? So I really like having that auto-regulatory component. You guys, I've talked about this a couple of times in the past. There's a lot of research showing that like, you know, the I think the, the way that they did it was like they would have like different kind of athletes or different kind of like workouts. They're just workouts, not training, but like a workout, right? Workout A, workout B, workout C. Workout is a hard, easy medium. And each time the, you know, test subject or whatever you want to call it, the participant went to go train or work out, they would fill out a questionnaire and that questionnaire would help them just determine, are you feeling good? Are you feeling kind of meh? Did you sleep well? All these things that they had to fill out. And then they would be given a workout based on how they feel for the day. What do we call that? That is an auto-regulatory component. Meaning when you feel good, you're going to push a little bit more. And when you feel like shit, you're going to take a little bit less. And that's all relative. It should feel similar, but the weights are going to be different. You know, you might be moving stuff around, things like that. So one of the, re the main reasons why I really like RPE is because it just allows you to, to be really, really productive and get a lot out of a session. Whereas like doing something with percentage, sometimes the percentage or the load that you're stuck with does not match with how you're feeling that day. So it can really mess you up. Like, or you feel really, really good and you're just not getting enough stimulus because you're lifting 60% that day, right? You're getting a stimulus, but you're not getting the, you know, perhaps the overload that we could have been get getting um, if our RPEs were a little bit higher, stuff like that. So I think with RPE, what, what just really what stands out to me and, and not capping your loads um, is that you allow yourself to always do enough to get, you know, to tell your body, hey, we, can, we need to get stronger, right? Whereas with percentage, sometimes you might be spinning your wheels or you might be doing too much. Um, now, you can coach. Coaching is the X factor here because you can coach anyway as long as your lifter has backstops and you educate them on how to adjust in the moment. I don't really think the program matters that much because the coaching is going to teach them how to navigate the program. And that's what people don't understand. And I've said this a long time ago. You could probably give me a decent program, just a random, like decent program that genuinely doesn't break people too bad. Shit, you could even give someone a hard program and I could probably teach that lifter and coach that lifter to be able to get through that program. Maybe throw in a little bit of RPE here and there, right? Add a little flex magic on top of it and they would probably, you know, progress. You get what I'm saying? A program is supposed to hit certain marks. And now for, you, for those of you that have taken my programming workshop, I kind of talk about these things. There's th you know, you have your training split where you're setting your split. That's how you're dosing stimulus. Then we're going down a little bit more specific. We have the training split and then the days that you're training, right? Then you have, you know, your rest days. And then you have in each individual day, how you organizing your workout and then on, then, you know, pulling it back out, you know, which days of the week are higher priority. We're looking to push a little bit more, which days of the week are kind of technique work. We're just, you know, facilitating recovery, things like that. Um, but load caps, 
capping the load. That's all. That's really my main argument against them is you're sort of, uh, you know, you, there's going to be times when, not, like I said, you can make them work. I am not like, I, I am not um, saying that you can't, they can't work for people. I have lifters, you know, where it does work for them. And it's really, really usually I put it in when someone just, they just overshoot chronically, right? They just not, for some reason, my English language is not getting to them and they just don't, you know, they just don't know how to not go heavy. They kind of, it's crazy. Like you'll tell them what to do and they'll acknowledge you and they'll hear you. But then when they get to the gym, they forget everything and they just do what they normally do. And then they end up hitting a heavy single, right? Um, so for the, for those kind of people, sometimes it's just helpful to just say, that's it. You're not going above that. And you kind of just got to live with the result you get, um, because you're picking a lesser of two evils. Um, so, and again, I just want to stress this. I'm not trying to shit on the way anybody else does things. I'm just saying that I really like being able to strike when the pan is hot, right? I don't know if you guys have heard that saying before, but um, a lot of times when you're fixed on the load for the day, it might not match what your body's giving you. You might be doing too much or too little. And I think just really teaching the lifter and educating them and helping them through different scenarios um, can really help just allow, allow that lifter to express themselves in a way which they may have not seen coming, which can do amazing things for their psyche and their mental and if you do that enough times, I can think of some of my juniors where they're really just having, they're just on, they have so much mental confidence. Like you just completely change the identity of a lifter. And then over a six to you know 12 month period, you just end up with like, they're not even the same person. Um, this video will self-destruct. That is way too much of valuable information to be getting for free. Uh, <laughs> I'm just playing. Anyway, guys, um, that's all I wanted to talk about. Ended up giving you this. Ended up being a lot more like like of a of a, I guess a banger video than I, than I was expecting. But thank you so much for uh, watching. Um, if you guys are able to take something away from it, if you're hearing my voice right now at the end of the video, that means you liked it enough to make it to the end. That being said, go ahead and hit the like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you're able to take something from it, let me know. Um, if not, I'll see you guys in the next one anyway. Peace. <laughs>